Deborah, yeah. um, don't worry if you're a Wakelet newbie, if you're completely new to Wakelet. Um, we're we're going to be doing some interactive things on this session as well. So hopefully you guys will get an idea of how it works by actually doing it. Um, but before we begin, I'm going to show you all the very basic um, premise of how it works. Uh, in addition to this, um, you can also join any of our webinars that we've got going every single week on Beginner's Guides to Wakelet, How to Become a Wakelet Pro. These are every single week. Um, James and Callum, once the chat has uh, settled down a little bit, you can share those links. So um, if there are things that you might not understand in this webinar, things that you don't understand what we're talking about, hopefully you'll get the gist. But if there isn't, then be sure to check out our other webinars as well. Um, we're really, really supportive at Wakelet. We know that for a lot of educators, this is not just the first time they're using uh, a platform. This will be the first time that they're actually using computers and uh, you know platforms in general. So there is no, there are absolutely no silly questions. Um, that's something that we learned very quickly on. Uh, so yeah, everybody um, uh, just, uh, when we share that link out, you can, there we go, James has shared it out. You can click on that and find some more opportunities for webinars as well as we go along. Okay, so we've almost hit the 500 mark. Um, so I think we, we're gonna start. Uh, we're seven minutes in, which again is a, is a crazy, crazy record. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully everybody gets something uh, good from this and takes it all away. So uh, hello everybody, uh, welcome to a very special Wakelet webinar. Uh, we'll be talking about Wakelet's collaboration feature and how you can use it with your students, uh, your colleagues, and your learning communities, uh, specifically during this remote learning period. So we're going to start, as I said before, with a really brief introduction to Wakelet and the collaboration feature. And uh, then we're going to hear from our amazing guests, uh, who you can see before you, Samantha, Andy, uh, Andy and Tish, uh, on how they've been using the feature in their classrooms and in their learning communities as well. We've also got James and Callum from Wakelet who are in the chat taking your questions, fielding them and helping share some, uh, some really cool useful links as well. Feel free to take screenshots as we go along. And given that this is the biggest um, uh, webinar we've ever done with the most amount of people, please share your experience with us today on Twitter with the hashtag collaborate on Wakelet. So you can take screenshots as you go along, uh, share some things that you found out that are new and uh, share them on Wakelet using the, uh, share them on Twitter using the hashtag collaborate on Wakelet. Um, before we go on, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I know that it's a really difficult and unprecedented time for, for everybody right now, especially educators. So we're really grateful that you've taken the time to join us today and learn some new things. And the things that you learn today don't feel pressured like, oh, I have to start using these in my classroom tomorrow. You know, you can, you can start using Wakelet for yourself for things like recipes, workout routines, uh, lots of other stuff. Um, and then once you get to grips with it, you can then uh, start using it in your learning environments and in your classrooms. So yeah, as I said, a very special record-breaking webinar for us. Uh, there are over 500 of you right now in the chat live with us. Thank you all so much for making history. Um, and as usual, like I said before, introduce yourselves in the chat box, share ideas and advice and make new friends. The reason I'm saying make new friends and share advice is because the last webinar I hosted, I was actually complaining about not being able to get a haircut during this lockdown. Um, I'm very vain, so I was complaining about getting, not being able to cut my hair. And a very helpful person in the chat uh, posted a video, a YouTube video, uh, that was a tutorial on how to cut your own hair. So I saved the link to my uh, Wakelet to-do list, uh, my to-do list collection. I took the plunge yesterday, and take a look. It's actually not that bad. I that mean, it's, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah. I think my barber, my barber's definitely lost a customer. I'm not going to show you the back though, because that's where things get messed up. <laughs> Don't give people the bad, the wrong ideas here. Yeah. Andy, right, right. Also, Andy got a haircut also. Uh, and I so can't my wife, wait to go back to the salon. Yeah. Oh yeah, my wife, she did a phenomenal job, yes. We're all yeah, at home barbers now. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, I will we're, not do that, I'm sorry. We're, we're all having to make do, but... Uh, my point is, you know, share ideas in the chat box. You really could be helping somebody out. Obviously, in my case, it's just a haircut, but for other people, it could be something a little bit more significant. Um, but so before we begin, I want to introduce our amazing guests. Um, these are Wakelet ambassadors. They've been uh, uh, riding the Wakelet wave, joining the web big parts of the Wakelet community for a long time. Uh, so first off, we've got the amazing uh, Samantha Schaffner. Uh, Samantha, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so, well, my name is Samantha Schaffner. And I've been using Wakelet for the better part of two years. Um, I switched from high school language arts and e-learning administration to strictly middle school language arts. And um, 
I uh, have a mentor, a lot of you might know, Randall, or Dr. Sampson. Oh, Randall Sampson, yeah, just amazing. really, you know, came in with this strong initiative, like, yo, we have this product that you guys are going to really like, and it has so much potential, and it's just been, you know, evolving over time, and we've been riding this evolution wave along with Wakelet, and I have been using it for the, this, sort of the same types of purposes over and over again because I do not have kids of age to make accounts, but right. my kids don't have to make accounts. Um, we have a procedure that we go through that I'll show you when, you know, I'm going through my part of the webinar, but yeah, I've been in, in urban education for 13 years. Uh, I'm from Crazy. Findlay, Ohio, and I love Wakelet and I'm excited to be here. Thank you everyone for coming. Awesome. Thank you so much, Samantha. I know in particular as well, um, you have an amazing relationship with your students. One, one of the things that I think we all noticed at Wakelet, you've got really good, close, empathetic relationships with your students. Really, really inspiring. Um, so uh, next up, we've got the awesome uh, Andy Kneven, uh, aka Coach K. Uh, Andy, could you let us know a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So one, thrilled to be here. This is amazing seeing all the people, you know, joined in around the world. But uh, my name is Andy Kneven, and I am a fifth grade math and science teacher in a middle school. So still have a little bit of the, the blend of the elementary type of setting, and but then still following the middle school uh, structure of, you know, seven periods. Um, however, I am, I love Wakelet. I found, you know, Wakelet as a, a, a way to organize a, all of my curation uh, I, ideas with Flip, with Flipgrid, um, so amazing partnership there. However, uh, my kids have been using Wakelet the last couple of years with group collaborations, with some different projects and writing within math. So uh, really excited to be able to share that with you guys because you can even learn. Amazing, thank you so much, Andy. And I loved, I loved meeting you um, at uh, ISTE uh, back in, was it 2019 or 2018 now? I think it was 2019, just, right? Just last year in Philadelphia. Yeah, yes. just last year, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, just love, love your spirit and your energy and everything that you do. You're so passionate and enthusiastic. It's, it's such a, a privilege to like have you as part of the Wakelet community. Really, really appreciate it. Um, next up, we've got the unstoppable, amazing Tisha Poncho. Uh, Tish, tell everyone what you're about. Hey, I'm Tisha Poncio. I'm a digital learning coach um, north of Dallas. I have been in education for 20 years. I was a classroom teacher for eight years, and I have been a coach um, of teachers and students pre-K through 12 uh, for about the last 12 years. Now I am solely on my high school campus coaching high school teachers, and I have the honor of being a teacher to a very special group of student tech leaders called SWAT. They are at CISD SWAT on Twitter. James will pop that in there so you guys can follow them. They're incredible. They are Wakelet ambassadors and they actually are the reason that I um, became passionate about Wakelet. I gave them an assignment, which I'll show you later. And some of them just took off with Wakelet and ran with it. Um, and so they are an incredible group of students. I'm so thankful to be here with my fellow guests, Samantha and Andy. I just cannot even believe the history that you guys are making today on this webinar. It's mind blowing. It's crazy, right? It's amazing, honestly. And I just want to thank you guys again for being here and being a part of this. You've clearly proven to be quite a draw. We definitely need to get you on more, more webinars now to try and beat this record. And um, we have a bonus guest for everybody as well. She's probably going to be a little bit upset, at the, uh, kind of like waking her up. But this is Queenie. Uh, if anybody wants to take a screenshot for Twitter, we're trying to make Queenie famous because she deserves it she's magnificent um this is her really really moody face though like she does not like it when uh, i pick her up when she's having a snooze but yeah we all love queenie here she's making a little special uh special guest appearance on the wake lot webinar so yeah that was our special guest um so uh yeah before well, before we hear from my amazing friends, um, not Queenie, she can't speak, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to show you what collaboration, uh, the collaboration feature is on Wakelet. And um, you're really going to love this. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to uh, show everybody uh, what it looks like to collaborate on Wakelet. And for those of you who don't know what Wakelet is, um, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll be able to understand it from, from this little example as I go through. And uh, this is hopefully gonna spark some ideas for everybody and we will be sharing something in the chat as well that's really special. So I'm gonna share my screen. And um, one thing that I've, 
I'm constantly asking everybody nowadays, but can you see my screen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Um, so right now I'm in my Wakelet home area. Now, for those of you who don't know what Wakelet is, a really easy way to explain it is uh, it's a platform that allows you to capture any content from across the web and uh, create collections with that content. So you can save um, uh, videos, articles, uh, social media posts, uh, save them to Wakelet, add your own thoughts, your own ideas, your own text, your own photos, that type of thing, and then curate really beautiful looking collections that you can then share with your uh, classroom, your students, uh, your teachers, or just keep them for yourself as well. There's lots of people who are using Wakelet uh, just to bookmark and organize awesome content that they find on the web, things like recipes, um, uh, uh, gym routines, and that type of thing. So in my home area here, uh, these are collections that I've already created. So when you first sign up to Wake Club, this area is going to be completely blank. It's going to be empty because you've not created any collections. So what you need to do is click create a new collection. And uh, this is where all the magic happens, right? We, we wanted to make Wakelet really visual and engaging for people. So we wanted to give you a little bit of customization over how you display your collections. So right now I'm gonna try something really cool. I'm gonna give my collection a title. So let's call this the Collaborate on Wakelet webinar. And I'm gonna give this collection a description. So I'm gonna say, here are the thoughts and ideas from everyone who joined the collaboration webinar. That's my description. Now I want to make this collection a little bit more colorful, so I want to add some photos to it. So I can add a cover image to this collection by just clicking add a cover image. I can upload an image from my own library, or I can click choose from library. When I click choose from library, I've got these amazing uh, high definition, safe for work, safe for school images. So I'm going to type in group because I think that collaboration, oh, there we go, perfect. This is the perfect image, I think, for this collection. I'm just gonna make this half so it doesn't get in the way. And I'm gonna add a background image as well because I think that everyone in this chat deserves a little bit of background image. So let's type in wave, since everybody right now is riding that wakelet wave. So I love this image, so I'm gonna choose this one. And this is where the magic happens right now on Wakelet. I've got this skeleton of a collection, right? Um, I've added the images, I've added the description. Now it's time to build it. And I can add any type of content from the web into this collection by just pressing the famous magical Wakelet plus button. When I click this button, I can copy and paste any, any link, any piece of content that I find from the web into this, and it will either embed it or add it to Wakelet. I can also add text. I can add straight from YouTube. I can connect my Twitter account and add tweets. I can add bookmarks, images, PDFs. I can add things from my Google Drive and my OneDrive. And I can also actually record Flipgrid videos directly into my Wakelet collection, which is an amazing feature, especially good for collaboration. But for now, I'm just gonna copy and paste some things in to start this collection off. So I'll show you how to do that. The first one is an article. This is a blog post uh, from Wakelet about our new feature called sub collections. I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this article. This could be anything. It could be from BBC, it could be from CNN, National Geographic, Discovery, any article that you find on the web. Go to the URL, copy it. You go back to your collection and in that paste area there, you just paste that link in and that will add that link to the Wakelet collection. Really cool part here is now I can actually edit this link. So I can click the edit button and I can change the text. I can add more images. I can do what I want, which is amazing. I can also add videos as well. So this is an amazing video that I found on YouTube from one of our ambassadors uh, called Anna from Russia. And this is an amazing video on how to use the sub collection feature. So because this piece of content is really interesting and I wanna share it with you guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the link to this video just go up to the URL, command C, go back to Wakelet, click the plus button again and click paste. That's gonna actually embed this video directly into that uh, Wakelet collection. And I can edit this and I can view it and people who've landed on this collection can view that uh, video as well. And uh, I've got a tweet here from the amazing Andy who put this together, uh, this awesome tweet um, uh, promoting this webinar today. I can grab tweets, I can grab Facebook posts, I can put anything from the internet onto Wakelet, which is amazing. So I'm gonna grab this tweet as well and just copy the link and click the plus button and paste it to Wakelet. That tweet will then embed into that Wakelet collection. Now, that's how you create a Wakelet collection. Build it, 
add some stuff, and then you can share it with whoever you want. So let me just move this here. Once you've created the collection, uh, you then go up here where it will say private. These are your settings. So uh, this is your privacy settings and your visibility settings. So public, if I set this collection to public, it means that uh, people, anybody can view this collection who lands on my profile. If I set it to unlisted, it means only people with the special link will be able to view this collection. And if I set it to private, that means only I can view it. But because I wanna share this with you guys today and only you guys, I'm gonna click unlisted and I'm gonna click done. That's it, that's how you make a Wakelet collection. Add anything you want to it and share it with whoever you want at any time. But this is what I'm about to show you right now, this is what the whole webinar is about, collaboration. Because today I'm gonna to try something really awesome. I'm gonna share this collection with people in the chat, everybody who's attending today. I'm gonna to share this collection with you and you can add all of your thoughts and ideas as we go through this webinar into this collection, exactly how I just showed you before. I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. And as you do this, imagine that this is your students, uh, this is your uh, teachers, this is your families, your friends, you can share collections with anybody and they can collaborate on them. So all you do is you click on contributors and that's gonna give you three different ways that you can uh, invite people to collaborate on this collection. The first way is a link. This is a link that I'm gonna be sharing in the chat and everyone's gonna go crazy on it. Uh, the second is a QR code, which is really good if you're in a physical classroom and your students are on devices. And the third one is a copy code. Copy code is really easy. Uh, your students can just go to wakelet.com, enter the link where it says, uh, enter the code where it says enter code and they can join the collection. The best part about all of this is that you don't even need a Wakelet account to contribute to a collection. So like Samantha was saying earlier, her students don't need to be signed up or registered to Wakelet. All they need is that code or that link and they can collaborate. So I'm gonna share this link now with everybody in the chat. So if everybody in the chat, just for one moment, uh, stops, uh, stops saying something. So everyone in the chat, stop. I'm gonna share this link now and all you need to do is click on that link and you're actually going to be able to contribute and add items, add anything that you like to that uh, collection. So I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your ideas. I want to see your tweets, images. You can record Flipgrid videos. Go ahead, click on that link and then just dive right in and add, collection, add any content that you want. You don't even need a Wakelet account to do it. So at the end of the session, we're gonna go back to that collection. Uh, James will keep on sharing it and we're gonna see uh, the types of things that people have shared. And uh, afterwards, we're gonna share it on social media as well. So just, yeah, copy and paste any link, add a Flipgrid video, uh, add a YouTube video, whatever your ideas might be about collaboration, bang, just put them straight in there. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move over to Samantha. Uh, and Samantha, like I said, said before, your introduction was amazing. Um, you're currently using Wakelet um, for things like exit tickets and uh, book reviews with your class. So I'd love, I'd love for you to show everybody in the chat um, how you've been using the collaboration feature on Wakelet. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I might ask for the thumbs up. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, wait. Okay. Yep, we can see that. You see this collection? Yep, perfect. Okay, great. So this is an instance of me using the collaboration feature with middle school students to um, do a, a plethora of things this time, actually, because they're learning from home. So the you know opportunities are expanding for us to do different things on Wakelet, which is great. Um, but on this particular task, the students were to log in and they were to actually attend a Zoom meeting that is right here where it says Wakelet webinar video. Schaffner, I uploaded this from Vimeo. And they, you know, this was the aftermath. And then we actually had our exit ticket for, you know, post that Zoom the directions were to select a text box and complete the following task. And they were supposed to answer a question, what is something important that you learned during our lesson today during our, our Zoom? And you know, I've been- sorry, sorry, very quickly, Samantha, would you be able to just zoom in a little bit on the, uh, on, on the actual browser? We've just got someone saying that uh, it's pretty small, they can't see it. Oh. 
I think it's just like like just pinch them up. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thank okay. you. So sorry. So sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. So um, I do have the video that you know repetition is good with middle school students when you're teaching them how to write. So they did watch this video on an edge elastic assessment that I embedded it in. This is actually something I produced for them based on um, an assessment that I made that was aligned with, you know, the explanatory informative essay for the, the Ohio air test for language arts. But um, I actually just added the link to the Vimeo. If it were YouTube, you know, I could do the same. And they, when we went in that day, and I'll show that the, the beginning of this process to you in a moment, um, you know, they went in and we actually just opened up our lesson in Zoom on Wakelet and straight up just went through and I went to all my links, everything that I needed was in one spot and the kids really appreciated that. You know, they didn't have to go to school a million times and, you know, flip back and forth between things because a, it's embedded and then they have the immersive reader as well if they need some help. So that's really key for differentiation. So this collection is sort of turning into like a hangout page, but it also, um, I love how you can change the directions at the top, you know, whenever. So I've had three different exit tickets on this same, you know, evolving collaboration with my students and I've hosted the videos that we've had uh, for class zoom on here as well for the kids that you know I work in a title one district so not everyone has the time or the internet access at the exact time to make it to the zoom meeting so this also you know helps with the the equity issue so I'm going to go ahead and queue up this video so you can see how we are you know what I'm going to use a different actually no I'm not going to use a different screen sorry it would take too long to make it big but is this still looking very small <laughs> sorry yeah you could zoom in just a touch maybe but I, I would do, I, that, I can see it quite well. I'll do that right now okay so this is like I don't know probably oh mm, I would take to the last quarter of my you know lesson with the kids on zoom because we've been getting on as a seventh and eighth grade team and you know going over like 20 minutes with each subject with the seventh graders and then 20 minutes for each subject with the eighth graders so this was a collaborative meeting um with my staff for seventh and eighth so i'm going to go ahead and play this so you can just see how you can interact you know, um, front load with Wakelet, actually collect your data and support your kids through communication, you know, and give them a place where they can give their opinions and work on their writing and become, you know, competent communicators and collaborators. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Hmm. My volume is not playing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes sometimes it can uh, the volume can go. Actually, it looks it looks like the volume slider on the your Vimeo icon is all the way down, Samantha. Um, is that what it is? Okay. It could be. Yeah, try and try and press. Yeah, just to the left, the left a bit, left a little bit more. Left one more. Yeah, that grayed out area. Just click that. Just click. Yeah, click where you are now. Oh, there you go. Okay. Ooh, my dog, dog, do not bark right now. <laughs> and I see if this works now. Structure, um, skills, if, if you have. I think so get back over to kind of guide you in the right direction about what. Okay, so. I'm back on here now. 
Um, I hope that, okay, this, and, and guys, if you did not get to this assessment yet, that's cool. I'm so sorry. Like, Give, I'm going to share a different today screen, today while okay. expressing your mind. Go ahead and get the introduction done if you okay. have not yet done is it. Gonna, is it lagging or? I do it's like, have yeah, it's one like last thing <laughs> for you. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's difficult. I've had trouble sharing videos on Zoom before, so. Give me one second. Uh, whilst we whilst we wait for Samantha, um, we've got some pretty awesome questions coming in about things like immersive reader, uh, Google Classroom, really, really amazing questions. Um, we will try and answer a few of them as we go along, uh, but we have got uh, James and Calum in the chat as well. So obviously, as you can imagine, like we've got dozens of questions, so we will try and answer them all. Uh, I think you're muted, Samantha. Uh, I'll try and unmute you. I'll try and unmute you. Okay, I'm okay, there you are. I, I, I'm going to try to, can I share a screen back with you and I'm going to open course, up Of course, yeah, screen. yeah. Because that's going to be the better way to do this. I have uh, it queued up from my QuickTime player before. Um, no, I just wanted it to go perfectly. <laughs> I don't know, it's fine. This is This is live TV, it happens, especially when you're using lots of different tech tools at once. Just let us let us know when you uh, when you're ready. I Samantha. am ready to switch screens. Okay. So hit the just hit the share screen and then uh, that should okay. be. Right. And then my volume is on. Awesome. Uh, Thank yes. You. Thank you for your patience, people. It's fine. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let this roll. The people scoring is no that the examinees only have 30 minutes, you know, five minutes to pre-write, 25 minutes to write. They know you only have 30 minutes. And they know that every once in a while you're going to make a mistake. You're not going to not get a wake it and put in the collaboration code right here, which is 729. Seven D eight three. That's the unique code. All right. And what you guys are gonna do? <laughs> you're gonna open. I'll show you. You're gonna just open a text box. Okay, a text box. And you are just going to say one thing you learned about writing body paragraphs that you are going to use to improve the body paragraph within your essay for this, for number 37. So you write here, as you the two sentences, answer this. What is something important, important, you learned during our lesson today, lesson and assignment. And just to leave you with something, we are going to be going over body paragraph two this week. And the conclusion might wait till Monday because I want to go back over sun on Friday. But you guys are doing an awesome job, and I'm going to go ahead and pass the screen to Mr. Shaw and just go ahead and get this. If you need to take a screenshot right now, or if you want to, you know, uh, just get it done on the side, do what you got to do. And I appreciate your participation. Okay. So, you know, that's an example of me using it in real time with remote learning right now. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about that. Yeah, I think I think well, I think that uh, probably a lot of people are, are are wondering like what what's the benefit of using this type of format to engage your students outside of um, something else like. Well, they love it. That's why <laughs> the <laughs> students love it. Um, I do have. I'm gonna go back to my. Wakelet page here. And my screen's still up, right? Okay, so um, I put in a, sorry, get into the beginning of this thing. I put in a, a sub collection here with some resources that kind of show, you know, how my students are thriving with using collaboration to publish their writing. And there's also a Wakelet Boathouse 
uh, episode on YouTube that goes over some of this stuff too. So you guys can actually, I'll throw this sub collection into the other collection that we're making about today. So you guys can have access to this stuff. But I put this together probably, oh, a half hour before this started. Um, I just went and grabbed the blogs that I've written uh, for Wakelet, just about, mostly about collaboration and, you know, student engagement and student hmm, ownership and learner agency and voice and choice and that kind of stuff. Uh, these, you know, blogs are really helpful and they're at the bottom. But I'll go ahead and show you a collection where, like, we're having a kind of Twitter chat here about, well, we got Messenger by Lois Lowry. And the kids like to get on here because you can, like, for instance, in this specific formative assessment, I had the kids choose four questions. So that's another means of differentiation, um, another means of students having some sort of you know, choice in what they are engaging with, you know, with the EOA materials. So you know, we have questions like, is the book's title a good one? Or what role, you know, or what's the power in Maddie's gift? And this, this book is awesome, by the way. I love this whole series. But basically, uh, by the end of it, you know, my kids really love it when the authors talk back to them. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to see how much pride they get from creating these uh, short responses for formative assessments like twice a week. Like, I've been doing it with them for two years and they make me, me or a very competent peer of theirs edit everything they do before they save it because they are very proud of it. And they're like, did you tweet this out? Like, do these people respond to that? And, you know, they write about it. They tell their friends about it. They tell their parents about it. So it's just, it makes them feel good. I did survey my kids about uh, these things about two months back. And one of my students, Isaac, just real, uh, using Wake but makes me happy. It makes me smile. <laughs> oh, that's amazing to hear. Well, there's so many yeah. awesome ideas there, Samantha. Thank you so much for that. Honestly, I think that's really, and I think that's inspired a lot of people. Um, just for the sake of time, though, let's jump on. Let's jump on to uh, Andy. Um, so, uh, Samantha, if you stop sharing your screen, and what we'll be doing, guys, as well, is we'll we'll be sharing um, like links to Samantha's pages as well, because there's some really awesome stuff on there that you guys can learn from. Um, but we'll jump over to Andy, and Andy's going to show uh, how he's been using Wakelet for um, uh, group research amongst a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, take it away, Andy. All right. So, um, in my screen, let me jump to that, I believe I have that shared over here now. Um, so I've been using Wakelet for a couple of years now and using it both between my math and my science. Um, and so I've kind of taken a uh, collection of collections uh, in prep for this. And so uh, one, being able to customize that cover image is really helpful, uh, especially with groups of getting a group picture. And so with some of the uh, Rube Goldberg projects I've done in science, just simply taking a picture as the creator of the collection, I am the one that adds that. The students don't do that part of it, but it really helps create a little bit of personality and uh, uniqueness to it. Uh, nothing against this group here. I just uh, didn't, you know, I don't know whatever happened with attendance that day. Um, <laughs> but I've used it also within math and uh, working on writing uh, and even taking like a, a, a flip grid and share that so then they can join and take that video, go to my.flipgrid.com and then add that into a collection. Um, but to really kind of show off a couple of these and some really great benefits of it is, and I'm actually gonna go to the one that doesn't have the cover image there because they were a phenomenal group here, uh, these three girls. And um, what's really nice about Wakelet and group collaborations is that having multiple contributors, so just like Ms. Bud just shared that, um, the code uh, for this, but I can also take that and share that uh, link out to my students so then they can go and just go straight to this and it's just selective for them. Now, um, I also then can see their names of who contributed to this project. So this was a Rube Goldberg project where 
they designed a Rube Goldberg machine, uh, multi-step, eight steps to ring a tabletop bell. Um, now they drew it out with digital ink within OneNote, uh, taking screenshots of that, adding that in, but I was able to, you know, be able to monitor what they had. I gave feedback in this way, but I can track their progress and seeing, you know, what they did each day, how they're talking about their supplies. And then, you know, on this, they can add, you know, their videos, but this group really was surprising of, they got really creative within adding the texting or the text over um, their image um, over the video and, you know, applying different things. They got real creative with adding, you know, power strips and a ball hitting this, uh, the button. Um, but it is a really great way to track student progress throughout this project. Um, and then even in the end, they uh, were able to put in their entire report. So there's a really beautiful connection within um, outside uh, sources of pulling like a OneDrive uh, link or uh, pulling in, uh, I mean, we're Microsoft School, so they just simply log in through, you know, their Microsoft Office 365 account, and they can just link in that document. And so I'm able to sit down with them, going through their entire report, talk through what they accomplished, you know, in this project. And also I can monitor this from my end. Um, so even if I were to backtrack, I'll go back to this other uh, collection here. Uh, these two ladies, um, you know, this is actually a year ago. So not even just this year. So uh, a couple years ago, I'm able to uh, monitor what is going on. You can take images from your computer. You don't always have to just import. You can just hold up what you want to see and import a picture like that. Um, but, uh, you know, they're able to talk out why they use the materials that they did. Why did they design it the specific way that they had? And not to say like I'm not being attentive, but I'm able to go through and monitor multiple groups all at the same time. So like this image in the background, I'm sitting back here. I'm attend I'm going through checking in on students' work of what they're accomplishing. Um, and it's just a really easy, great way to document progress uh, and share stuff. Now, um, within students here, uh, within my math, uh, another kind of uh, group collaboration is that I created this collection and shared it out within my students. And this is my math writing, uh, Wakelet writing. So I'm able to even give them images and give them prompts, and then they go in and can write about this. So this is essentially what I did Monday. Like this week, a few days ago, is, you know, I gave them uh, an image of, you know, specific geometric figures of talking about, you know, what type of triangle it is based on its attributes. And they're able to then go in and add this. And what's really beautiful is that it has the immersive reader component that's right in there that you can click on it. It takes that and then it will be able to go through put it into a script uh, that it can read. You have all the features uh, to be able to, you know, go through your reading preferences, you know, translate. Uh, so the immersive reader is maybe one of my favorite things that is embedded within so many applications, so many programs. Um, and I'm able to track the writing. I'm able to then talk about their work with them. Um, and like I said, you can take a, a Flipgrid video and bring that in. So, you know, with this one, uh, the student, she was uh, going through and, um, you know, draw out a table within Flipgrid to show their learning. So student voice is still a really big component here. Um, and they're able to bring in outside content to what they are wanting to share. Um, uh, let me pull just one more into this. Uh, it was, uh, you know, within this group here, these gentlemen, um, you know, again, able to see their picture on that cover image is really helpful, um, but they're able to bring in outside sources of where they got their information in prep for this project. Uh, and so they're able to go in, say their hypothesis, but pull in outside videos like YouTube links of Audrey's Monster Trap. Uh, and so it just is a really uh, powerful tool for that group component, incorporating a Wonderopolis of where they, you know, learn about Rube Goldberg machines and what makes them work. So just amazing, you know, tool for having students have their own entity, their own space to work as a, as a group, but then I still am able to oversee and monitor that throughout the process. Awesome. And um, Andy, um, 
I guess like you can put lots of different content on on Wakelet. What do you like most about that? Like what types of content would you say are most frequently shared in these collaborative collections? I mean, a lot of students, I mean, the text feature is uh, really pre prevalent, um, really used, really popular, but even just images. Um, I mean, if I were to go into the collection uh, myself, it's really a slick, easy way that, I mean, you just going in, hitting the green plus, and now this is already a collection in a collection. So it's a sub collection already. So I can't add another collection in here, but um, you know, using the text, but this uh, web uh, URL, again, like they were taking YouTube uh, clips and they can just, you know, click in YouTube and go find where it is, um, you know, straight from there searching it, but you can take the Flipgrid video through my.flipgrid.com and pull that because the Flipgrid video link over here, um, it's tied to shorts uh, on the educator end of it, the educator dashboard. But I mean, OneDrive is an incredible, powerful, you know, connection to be able to pull that report. Uh, so the writing that the students were making, um, so they're not just, they can keep the formatting, they can have their own style, their own flair, or if they had a sub presentation, they can bring that and put it straight into their collection. Um, but uh, I mean, there's so many things, I mean, even within my own personal uh, wakelets, um, I'd say um, if I, uh, so many, I've used it so many times, but you know, even my own personal classroom doodles, um, every month I draw a doodle uh, for my students. And so having uh, even in my, you know, remote uh, teaching, I have a, a whiteboard in here that I can draw, but you know, just what Ms. Bed shown of pulling at tweets and stuff like that. So my own collection of you know, tweets or video files or just pictures um, is a really simple way to, you know, pull that content into a collection. I love that, Andy. And, and just please, for everyone in the chat noting as well, that these, these collections that, Andy are share, uh, that Andy's sharing, they're not publicly available. This is for Andy and Andy's class only, right? Um, with, with Wakelet, you've got uh, lots of different options on how you decide to choose your, to share your collections, public, unlisted, or private. Um, you can keep a collection private or unlisted and have people collaborate on that for sure. So only you and the people who you're collaborating with can see it. Um, so yeah, uh, is there anything else at all to add there, Andy, before we jump onto Tisha? No, that's all great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Some really amazing examples that we can see from the chat. A lot of people inspired uh, who are going to go and give it a try themselves as well. Um, so Tisha, uh, uh, our last guest, last but not least, um, obviously, uh, you've been working a lot with us with the Student Ambassador Program, um, and you're using uh, the, the, the new sub collections feature as well. You've got some amazing ideas for that. I'd love to hear how you're using Wakelet, uh, the, the collaboration feature on Wakelet with your students. So I've been using Wakelet for a little over a year now. Shout out to Deb Zeman for introducing me to Wakelet. Uh, I, it was really my students that pushed me to start using Wakelet as much as I do. Um, and I'm really excited to share with you some of those things today. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I'm going to share my desktop on purpose because I want to show you a couple of different things. Um, so you guys can see my screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to start off with my profile and I saw a lot of you asking the question, um, as far as, you know, you've seen people use websites or whatever. So this is my profile, wakelet.com slash at Tisha Poncio. And when you get there, you will actually be able to scroll down and see all of the collections that I have made public. Now I've made these collections public on purpose and I'm going to go over these at the very end because these are the most exciting collections that I'm going to talk to you about today. But I want to show you, um, just starting off, one of the things that I use Wakelet for in collaboration with my teachers is actually to create a school digital portfolio. And so that's what I've done here. Um, I have just went in and given my teachers this link and they can go in and add anything that they would want. Um, and you can see as I scroll through, I have some, some reminders of, of, for them like SAMR and SMART goals that we went over. Um, the great thing about this is that my teachers can add in anything that they want. They can add pictures, they can add a YouTube video, they can add a Google, uh, a Google Drive file. They could put in a Flipgrid just telling me what risk they took with technology this year and 
honestly, we, we talked about this in the fall, but I feel like we've all been thrown into taking risks with technology suddenly. Um, so I have just made it available for them to showcase the great things they're doing in their classroom. And the problem I was trying to solve with this was that I knew my teachers were doing great things in their classrooms, but not everybody knew that and not everybody was seeing it and they weren't seeing from each other because, you know, they're, they're, PLC time was just spent with their department. So this has been a really great way to showcase their work. Um, another way that I'm using it is uh, with just some fun relationship or team building. Um, and so this is just an easy collaboration. I sent them the link. I uh, actually took the share link right here. I love this integration. So Andy was talking a lot about the easy integrations. I click right here on Google Classroom and it allows me to add in that link to any Google Classroom that I own. And that's what I did with my teachers. I popped the link in there. I gave them instructions, the exact instructions you're seeing here, I gave in their Google Classroom. And they are just practicing one, using Wakelet, collaborating with Wakelet, and then they're telling me what song would be their walk-up song. And um, I loved going through and listening to some of their songs. Um, of course, mine is right here. So you guys may wanna put your, your what, what would your walk-up song be on the collaboration uh, uh, Wakelet that Mispa shared with you. Mine is Lose Yourself by Eminem. I'm always going to choose that one. If you were at Flipgrid Live ever, you know that I love to karaoke to Eminem. <laughs> um, but this has been a fun relationship builder. One of my teachers actually shared with me today, she used this exact same activity, but for her seniors, she let them choose what graduation song they would get their diploma to. So I loved that she really um, connected with them and gave them some choice. Uh, you know, it's a difficult time for seniors. So I loved that. Um, she shared that idea. Um, so back over here to my profile. And I want to just talk about this for a second. This is a great way. Um, Wakelet is a great way to use it as a professional portfolio. It's a great way for your students, your older students, to use it as a professional portfolio for themselves. So I actually go through with my students and I teach them how to create a good resume and a good digital portfolio. Um, and so for us, we say, you know, a, a resume is a promise, but your digital portfolio is the proof of what you can do and you're gonna showcase that. So to show the sub collections, and I'm gonna just show this preview here. I wanna talk about this for a minute. You guys can see that, right, Ms. Beth? Andy? Yeah, we can see that, yes, okay. perfect. This is just a screenshot because I want to talk about this for a minute. Um, the the sub collections are so beneficial for your under 13 students. Okay, so beneficial. This is really solving that problem of how are we going to allow our little learners to collaborate on on Wakelet collections and they can create their own. So now they're owning their own collections. Um, I want to tell you this that it is so great because you do not have to have a Wakelet account to be able to create a collection now. And, and my students, um, in the beginning, my students, you know, are ambassadors. So I was giving them uh, instructions on creating sub collections and they were really confused. And it was because they were logged into their Wakelet account and being logged into their Wakelet account did not show them this create collection icon. So I just want to make a note of that. Make sure if you have a Wakelet account already and you want to participate in a sub collection, I always tell my students to open a new window, um, like an incognito window in Chrome or use a different browser like Safari. Um, and then that create collection button will open. And we are looking at that as well, Tisha. Right? We've, since we launched that feature, so many people have been saying, we want this in our own collections. Like, we don't yeah. want to just have to collaborate to do this. So we, we obviously, we listen to the community, so we will be adding that for sure. Good, good. My students are going to be so happy. Um, <laughs> so, um, I'm going to show you now their sub collection. So this was a sub collection, and it was an assignment that I had them do this week. And uh, I just, um, you know, gave them the same instructions that were in Google Classroom. I do that a lot. I love to use emojis. As you can see, Andy went over the immersive reader here. 
and I changed it to a mood board. Okay, so I, um, again, just so you all know, I've gotten parent permission and student permission um, to share all of this stuff. So it is public. If you were wondering, you can go to my profile and see it on your own. Um, I'm gonna show you Jill's portfolio. So when I click on her collection, it's going to load the items that she's put into her collection for us. It's running a little bit slow, but here we go. So she's given me an objective here and it's still loading, but you can see that she has put her Wakelet profile link here and she's uploaded a PDF version of her resume. Now her resume was created in, uh, I believe Canva, but I have other students who create in Docs and other students who create in Adobe Spark. Um, I love that Wakelet gives my students the choice. They can choose the tool they wanna create in and Wakelet has made it so easy for them to upload whatever they would want. So uh, all of my students added to this portfolio as you can see and they've all added their own stuff and you can actually click into their profiles and go see all of the things they've done including their student ambassador work that they they did um, at the end of last year so that's one example now we're gonna go back and then I decided that I wanted to really showcase um, families. So one of the things that I've been trying to do personally with my students and, and with my teachers is to create assignments that also are featuring some sort of family component. Um, so when we started resumes and portfolios, I had them go get their resume and portfolio uh, <laughs> peer reviewed by somebody in their family. And they had to post in Google Classroom what their family said about their portfolio. Well, then I decided, well, let's see what they've been doing during this quarantine and let's use the sub collection feature so I created this and they're basically going in, creating a sub collection using their family's name and I've given them some things to add in. So a, a video or a photo of something, you know, doing something together. Some, everybody's cooking and baking, everybody's watching movies. <laughs> um, so now I have these sub collections and I'm gonna show you this camp collection. I have two sisters, actually I have, I have many siblings in my class. So they did a joint sub collection here. And hopefully it will load. It's like my computer is getting such a workout these days that it's much slower than it normally has. <laughs> Mine too. Mine's running yeah. a bit slow. <laughs> so you can see they added a really cute, you know, header image here. And they've actually put by Avery and Aaron. And one of their assignments was for them to go around and ask their family members one thing that they were think they were thankful for during this time of isolation. Um, and so I immediately saw this and it just really warmed my heart to know that they were having conversations about gratitude in the midst of such a, a, an odd time. Um, their family is actually making masks. So they were documenting that. Um, they added a book here. They added their Easter egg hunt <laughs> from Easter. Um, I just really, when I created this assignment, it was really with the intent that um, they were practicing sub collections and connecting with their family. But what I didn't realize is that seeing these as their teacher really, really connected me to them and their families. Um, and so it gives me talking points with them when I'm on Zoom, or it gives me talking points when I'm using Flipgrid with them. So that is another way you can use it, is, is that family um, bonding time. Now I'm gonna go back. I'm really sorry about the slowness of this. <laughs> now, I'm gonna talk to you about the thing that I'm most passionate about, which is the Student Ambassador Program. If you don't know about this, you need to go to the link. James, if you can pop that in there, you need to sign up. Um, again, in the beginning, we created this program for students 13 and older because that's who needed to sign up for accounts and Wakelet. But now, as the teacher, you can create a collection with each task. So that's what I've done here. 
task one is all about the student ambassador. And so um, I give them the instructions. These are the exact instructions that you'll get when you get all the materials. Once you've signed up for the student ambassador program, I just copied and pasted. Um, and then I used my own children. <laughs> so I, I used them as an example and they went in and made collections for me. So these are their sub collections and these are their answers. Now, the great thing about sub collections and the thing that I want you to keep in mind, sub collections are really with the intent that your student is going to use that for a 25 to 30 minute lesson. So you want them to be able to do the sub collection in one sitting. Um, they need to have their materials ready. They need to have those tabs open or, or those pictures downloaded so that they can pull all of those things in at one time. Um, but this is my daughter, Madison. She's in college and um, she added that, uh, you know, she loves, she loves Audrey Hepburn. She's a very old soul. So she added uh, Audrey Hepburn and then she loves oldies music. She's definitely not hip or on TikTok, <laughs> but we love that about her. And she's added Frankie Valli. Um, you know, I'm a fan of Frankie Valli. And then I'm going to show you Mattis or Avery, my other daughter, Avery. She's turning 15 tomorrow. Um, so that's super exciting. Oh, congratulations. Um, yeah. She's starting to drive, Miss Fat. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I'm going to tell you guys while this is loading, but as a parent, <laughs> the most <laughs> difficult part, Andy, for me has been them starting to drive because you're giving them this vehicle and they have all the control. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Um, so here's Avery's. And this is Avery. This should tell you right here what Avery's personality is. She's very hip. She knows all the new stuff, all the new lingo. Um, she's very into Disney. And James will appreciate that her favorite song ever is Dolly Parton 9 to 5. Um, and so <laughs> this is just a great task for your student ambassadors to learn about them and for them to kind of express themselves. Um, that's really the key. I think connecting with your students right now during remote learning um, it's so important for them to be able to have choice. It's important for them to be able to express themselves um, and, and just be creative and, and let them create. Uh, that would be my, my advice to teachers. Instead of asking your students to complete things, um, and you saw with Andy's examples, have them create something. Have them really use their mind and their tools and, and, and use you as a facilitator. Um, but Ms. Ba, I think I've covered everything. Yeah, it looks like it. It looks like it. Um, I mean, I think that one of the things that I, I love most about seeing everybody like share how they've been using Wakelet and collaboration and everything is just how different it all is. And I think that judging by so many different questions that we, we're getting in the chat right now, you have to bear in mind that imagine Wakelet as just like a canvas. It's like that there's so many different ways that you can use it and that you can innovate with it as a teacher. So feel empowered. You don't have to necessarily copy what other teachers are doing after you use the platform for a little bit um, personally or you know just with your students or just with other teachers you will gradually come up with these amazing ideas ideas on how you can start to use it in the ways that you've been seen uh, uh, today by Tish, Andy and Samantha. Um, obviously Tish Tisha, Andy, and Samantha have been using Wakelet for quite some time. So these examples here, um, these are the results of, you know, uh, uh, a little bit of expertise, I guess, in, in using Wakelet. I would suggest, um, you know, use Wakelet to begin with for yourself, like I said before. Um, it's really simple. It's a very, very simple platform. It's literally just copy and paste items into a collection, share that collection, boom, you're done. And Mr. As, I, um, I want to I interject and tell, I, I need to tell your attendees this, because if you remember <laughs> in the very beginning, and I told you and James this in the very beginning, I was a beginner user for a long time. It, it was, it was difficult in the beginning for me to wrap my brain about around how it all worked but truly when I let my students start using it and I had them sit beside me and walk me through it I mean they've done that with several things Buncee also <laughs> um, use your students let them coach you through that but but again miss was right this is the um, evidence of me really um, being intentional <laughs> because in the beginning I was just using it for recipes Andy I was sending my husband <laughs> the recipe links and I was saying please make sure that this gets done before I get home <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. And I, I think that like now, now more than ever as well, especially, I think that educators have a lot of ed tech platforms um, that they want to explore. And you can't become an expert, expert in a platform in one day. But what we've really tried to do at Wakelet is to make the, the, the basic use of Wakelet really easy and really, really simple. Um, what I'd suggest, I am going to share a few links just as we're coming to the end now. I'd say we'll give it another five minutes or so. Um, but just as we're coming to the end, I'm going to share a few links on how to join the Wakelet community because um, that's a really good way for you to kind of gradually start to build up on the skills that you've learned on Wakelet to the point where you feel really comfortable innovating and coming up with these crazy, amazing ideas that we've never heard before. So as we always say, at, at Wakelet, we're, we're not educators. We rely on educators like everybody in the chat, like Tish, Andy, and Samantha to come up with these amazing ideas because there's no way that we could have come up with them ourselves sat in a room or an office. Um, so yeah, you know, one of the things that we want to do is empower everybody to come up with these amazing, awesome ideas. You've seen the ideas that Samantha had, the ideas that Andy had, the ideas that Tisha had. They're all different and they're all very unique. Um, but now because uh, Andy, Tish and Samantha have created these ideas, we just amplify those. We share them with the community and then people are like, oh, I didn't realize I could do that. I've seen in the chat today, which has been crazy, so many people speaking about Wakelet and this collaboration feature. Um, people really excited thinking, I, I didn't know you could do that with Wakelet. Well, yeah, I mean, we just try and show you the features and let you know how to do things. But in terms of taking it to the next level, you're educators, you know, you're, you're the ones that are the innovators. You're the ones that come up with these amazing ideas. Um, it's really, it's such a shame because we did have some questions, didn't we? But it looks like we've gone over, over time. So what we'll do is just to, just to kind of lead us off. Um, I just want to have everyone give us like a final thought, which is, um, it's quite a broad question, I guess, guys, but we'll start with you, Tish. Um, what, how important is collaboration as not necessarily on Wake Club, but just the concept of collaboration? How important is that for, um, you know, students right now, given these circumstances that educators find themselves in? Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you just all of us, and I think we're all experiencing the same thing, you know, um, our students need to feel connected. Um, some of them, many of them, um, would never want you to know that they are are isolated with you know in abusive homes or you know in not ideal situations. They don't want to reveal that maybe their parents have lost their job. I, I think collaboration right now is so important. And while we want to focus on those learning goals all the time, I mean that's the whole goal of our jobs. We also don't want to forget to bring in some of those fun pieces to just make them feel like they are part of a group and they're just working towards a common goal. Um, and it doesn't have to, it, you know, it doesn't have to be everything. Don't feel like you have to overwhelm yourself, um, whether it's Flipgrid or Buncee or Wakelet, um, just being able to give them that opportunity to connect with you, their teacher. Um, so I would say my, my, my advice to teachers is to feel the fear and do it anyway. You may not love how you sound on video. You may not love how you look on video. Um, listen, all of us are, you know, thrown into the same ocean at the same time. But yesterday I did this incredible thing with Zoom. I, I bought personally, um, somebody on the Wakelet webinar the last time I was on said, go get Jackbox. So I went onto my, my laptop and bought a game and I streamed it through Zoom during our team meeting. And my students, you know, our great students, they didn't expect that we were going to play a game, but they didn't want to leave. And I think you're going to find that when you give them the opportunities, they're going to want to stay with you because you're safe and you're familiar. So that's what I have. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I love that as well. And I think that one thing that you showed from the stuff that you uh, uh, were sharing re just, just before um, is that this idea of like a human connection and a human on it is really important. You can use, uh, you know, Wakelet and other ed tech tools as well to just do fun things that aren't necessarily even education based. Um, there's a lot of residual skills, things like empathy and um, you know, uh, emotional learning that kids can learn just from playing games and, 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 and you know, sharing things that aren't necessarily educational. So I really love that point. Um, over to you, Andy. Um, why do you think collaboration as a, as a concept is, is so important right now, given, given this particular point in time? I mean, collaboration is, I mean, it's part of everyday life. I mean, there's no, you know, thing that we do that you do solely by yourself. I mean, you're dependent on other people and connecting with other people. Um, I mean, Tisha, I would echo exactly like what you said of, you know, joining some kind of uh, 
uh, game sort. I mean, I played game kit with my kids in a team's call, uh, a couple, you know, last week. And then, uh, you know, just a couple of days ago, actually just yesterday, I had my kids join a Minecraft uh, world with me. And I mean, they oh, are amazing. wanting to connect, um, and, you know, go through, I mean, there's still learning going on. Uh, we went through a geometry kind of thing in Minecraft at the same time, having that sense of, uh, teamwork is unifying. And I mean, it's just what we, gravitate towards um, and I mean we aren't trying to create something brand new we have to work together to pull ideas and that's what I mean that's what this webinar is all about is you know bouncing new ideas learning something from each other and taking that and then we go and connect with our colleagues back at our own schools and that just like ripple effects outward and I mean we're collaborating to make it better to make it you know more meaningful to engage our students uh even though we're distant uh it's making this connection with our students amazing yeah i i i, I love that idea as well of um just like cr cross platform not necessarily being stuck on one platform or or one thing mashing things together getting really creative like you know we saw samantha like mashing up zoom with wakelet um we've seen people smashing uh, Flipgrid with Wakelet, that type of thing. So yeah, just getting creative and, and I guess thinking outside the box, amazing. Um, Samantha, so like I mentioned at the beginning, um, you know, we know that you've got a really close, awesome relationship with your students in particular. Um, what does collaboration mean to you right now? Why is it such an important thing right now, given, given what's going on in the world? You may have lost Samantha. Oh no, I hope you haven't. I think we've lost Samantha. I think her connection's gone. Is it just me or? No, I don't see her. No, she's, oh, yeah, what a shame. Oh, that's a shame. Well, hopefully, hopefully she pops back, um, but she may reconnect. But um, whilst, whilst we've just got some spare time, uh, just in case Samantha doesn't, doesn't come through, um, I'm gonna share a few links with you. I've seen some of the questions that you guys have been asking. And um, I just wanna say that we, we understand that some of you may, might be completely new to Wakelet and you may have found the last hour super overwhelming. Um, don't worry because we're going to record this and we're going to share it out so you can access it at any time. And um, if you join the community and if you go to this page that I'm, I'm going to share with you right now, um, this link, which I'm sharing in the chat, um, oh, and James did it at exactly the same time. Um, you, you can then take a look at the upcoming webinars that we have going forward. So we have a Wakelet for Beginners webinar twice a week um, at different times as well, just in case you're in a different time zone. And we've got one which is slightly more advanced called Become a Wakelet Pro Surfer. Check out that, sign up to the webinars. It's a really good place. We slow everything down. We, we talk about Wakelet from the basics. We, we saw someone asking in the chat there, you need a Wakelet for dummies. That's essentially what it is. It's like a Wakelet completely for beginners. We explain to you the concept. We explain to you some key features, some key integrations and that type of thing. Um, so yeah, we'll be, sharing, uh, we'll be sharing lots of different coming webinars. Uh, again, James has just shared the link there. Um, please share and celebrate your experience with us today. I hope that you found the webinar really useful. I've shared the hashtag again on Twitter with us, share any screenshots or ideas or thoughts that you've had. Um, and what I'll also be doing in the chat right now is I'm gonna go back to the grand reveal. So let me just share my screen. This is the last thing we'll be doing. So I'm gonna share my screen. I remember everybody at the beginning when I shared this collaborate on Wakelet. And look, look, this was, these, this was all the collection, all the content that I added, right? Well, watch what happens when I refresh it now that everybody's uh, added their content to it. Boom, 231 items from the chat. People have added Wakelet collections. People have added uh, notes, all this amazing feedback that we've got from everybody in the chat. How amazing it is, is this? We've got Wakelet collections, we've got blogs, we've got tweets. You guys have done such an amazing job at this. I'm, I've literally got goosebumps right now seeing this for the first time because I didn't know what to expect. But hopefully this shows you how easy it is, the power of being able to collaborate just through a single link. It took me two minutes to put this collection together and I've been able to crowdsource all these amazing pieces of content from everybody who joined in the chat today. Just imagine how powerful that would be um, with your students and your classrooms and your learning communities. Really, really, really happy. I'm gonna share that collection now with everybody so that you can all uh, get a chance to actually see it. So this is the webinar collection. I'm gonna put it in capital letters.
If you're looking for your own stuff in that large collection, just press Command F. Most of the time, your browser has a search feature, and you can just search for it. Um, but yeah, I think I think we've come we've come to the end. Um, we're gonna we're gonna leave the chat open for a few minutes just so that you guys can chat a little bit more, and we can share some more links with you. But I really appreciate you being here. This has been phenomenal. Like over. 500 people joined us today. It really is truly groundbreaking, truly historic. I want to say a huge thank you to, to you, Tisha, to you, Andy, and Samantha as well. Um, I think she's, is she still here or is she still having issues? Oh, Samantha, I'm you're back. back. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, it looks like we lost you. I oh. made, yeah, I made it back. I had to get on my phone. So, oh, yeah, Samantha, it kicked well, me off, right? Yeah, I think it did. I think it did. Um, but what we'll do, Samantha, is we're just doing last, like last words, like final thoughts. And I was just about to get okay. to you, but it looked like you disconnected. Um, just very quickly for, for everybody in the chat, we've still got almost 400 people in the chat. Uh, just before we wrap up, your final thoughts. Um, why is collaboration so important, especially at a time like now? We know that you're really, um, you know, you've got a really cool relationship with your students. You're, you're very much invested in their well-being. Why is, why is that important now? Well, right now, you know, the collaboration, it puts the learning, the, the teacher's the facilitator more so than, you know, telling someone to do this, this, and this. And they know that the collections are ours. They're not mine. You right. know, they belong to us as a group. And it helps us stay connected. And it also gives them, you know, a place to just be able to express their opinions about things as they are growing into communicators um, that have to be able to keep up with these tech trends. You know, they're, they're 21st century tech babies and they have to stay up to speed and Wakelet does that itself. And they see the, you know, the evolution of the app too. So that's really awesome that they get to see this blank canvas that's you know, turning into such a learner centered, but yet still so flexible app. So I would say, you know, to stay connected, absolutely. But also they need this innovation and sophistication level to be able to create. So it's, it's absolutely vital. Amazing. Thank you. So I love the idea of having like a blank canvas and then being able to add on it and see things evolve, just like we saw at the end of the session. Then when I shared that amazing collection yeah. with, uh, with everybody, um, Guys, thank you. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to Andy, Samantha and Tisha for joining us. I know that you've all got really busy, hectic, hectic schedules. We really appreciate it. You're amazing, amazing ambassadors, amazing parts of the community. <laughs> and to everybody who's joined us today as well in the chat, we know it's a difficult time for everybody. So the fact that you've taken the time out to actually learn a little bit and take an hour and 20 minutes um, to, 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 to learn some new things, we appreciate it so much. Like I said before, yes. we're going to leave the chat open so that you guys can go back and um, take a look at any links that you've missed. We'll leave it open for around five or 10 minutes. Um, our, our guest, if you could just mute your mic. So I think you can actually click off. I think it's on me to, to end it. So I think you can just click it off. Um, Thanks, but, yeah. Thanks, you guys. I had Thank so much fun. Thank you, everybody. Oh, Sorry about my tech hiccup. Oh, no, I it's fine, really Samantha. appreciate you all coming. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank really you. appreciate it. <laughs> take care, guys.